oh my god, I've wanted this since I was a kid, and you made it suck. They were kind of really based themselves around this whole greater good idea, and they discovered, oh boy, it's not enough. No. It's corn. It's corn. It's corn. It's I am Isander. And I am Coda. And thank you for tuning into this episode. Today we're going to cover the person fighting tooth and nail to have the longest name in all 40k. <laughs> Which is Commander Farsight. Well, that's a pretty short name. His full name's a whole thing. Well, we'll get to that later on because Tao names have like... He has a name... The way Tao work, they have a name and then stuff gets tacked onto it mm. as as they go. They they do the the full title of... Uh, what's the what's the president's name? Idi Amin. Idi Amin. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. kind of like that. It's yeah. ca- but not that long. Anyway... Before we get into that, it is that time. You get to decide the next thing we create. Rest in peace to all the Nightlord fans. It was close, but the Tau barely won. You will get another opportunity in the future. Same thing with the burn unit, the Salamanders. Both of you will get another shot in the future. Maybe head to head, maybe not. We'll see. But what matters is today's options are the Inquisition, the Mechanicus, the Sisters of Battle, and the Assassin Norm. Those are the four choices today. Um, make your voices heard in the comments section below because it's, it's the only way it happens. The only way the Tao got a video is because the people who love the Tao showed up. Voted just enough to edge out the uh Pretty much every episode. Night Lords, yeah. So if you want it made, make sure it's, your voice is heard in the comments. Same as usual. Top three gets made. Last one gets put on ice for later. Probably. We don't know when, because 40k is huge, but eventually it will get made. It'll happen eventually. It's not yes. like they've gone away. Mm. We're not like mm. certain companies who just vault their media and then say, hey, yeah. you can't see it anymore. Yeah. You will see the videos start coming out, not this Friday, but next Friday the 23rd. And of course, it'll be by order the most votes. Patrons have already been voting, so you guys got to vote too. Now let's get into Farsight. Commander Farsight. Technically on paper, he's a traitor to the greater good. He's a traitor to the greater good. T- technically. Uh, he's one of the most divisive figures in Tao history. And I'll be honest, a little bit of a black hole for the Tao's plot. K- kind of the same way the Emperor and his family feud suck up a lot of the Imperium's plot. Farsight does that for the Tao. He tends to... If there's any interesting stories that could be told with grunts and Farsight is nearby, he will siphon all that plot. He, he is now the main it's character. It's the same thing that happens whenever a Primarch's nearby. It's just, why would I want to know about him when Farsight's doing stuff? He's, he's the main character. It's it's not bad, though, because he is, A, mostly done very well, and B, I don't care what you say. I don't care if you think the Necrons are your favorite. I don't care if you think the Mechanicus are going to be fun. You will like Farsight. And he will be the first model you buy. This isn't an opinion. It's a fact. You can quote me at the end of this video. And let's get into why. Well, for starters, he's got a big mech as his model. Well, like, no, actually. He, big, big mechs are really cool. Well, yes, obviously. Big mechs are really cool. But he didn't, he didn't always have the, the mech. Um, Farsight was just... He was born into the fire cast. For those of you that don't know, the Tau organized themselves kind of like the world of Avatar does. Where there's water... Earth, wind, and fire. Do you remember? Yes. That's no. The way they, that's, that's the way they organize. <laughs> no, I don't remember. <laughs> that's the way they organize themselves. Each cast is good at a specific thing. So the water cast are just charismatic as all hell. They're the people you want to send to talk on your behalf. And they're the, the diplomats, the bureaucrats. They're the ones who give the Tau their ability to negotiate, basically. I mean, the Tao do have a decent proposition for most people, but that's the water cash shtick. Each one has a shtick. They figure you out mentally and then use that to do whatever they need. Yeah, exactly. They're smooth as all hell. The fire cast is their war division, basically. These are fighters pretty much trained from birth, and all they do is ready for war. One of the greatest honors in the fire cast is to be like, my son made it into the military and he's doing fantastic. That that's one of that's one of the greatest honors you could have in the fire cast. The most interesting thing about it, though, is it's not just war for war's sake, because you know they it, fight for the greater good, and they're still about peace. It's not like they're doing random frivolous war wartime stuff. I'm not, well, they're really not about peace, <laughs> but it's how do I describe this? It's like they see war as their discipline their craft if that makes sense the earth cast or their 
they're, they're mechanics, they're scientists, their craft is making sure that bridge doesn't collapse and we have mechs. That's, that's what they do and that's what brings them joy. The firecasts don't see their job as, oh, mine is to destroy that enemy, it is the art of war in its entirety. My job isn't just to beat the enemy, it's when diplomacy fails, I'm to ensure that the greater good is safe and that they're not. <laughs> <laughs> they read all of Sun Tzu and that's really the vibe you get and there is a Sun Tzu character we're going to get to later but that's how they approach it it's less I'm going to punch you in the face and more I'll do what it takes for the greater good and I will do it to the best of my ability and I'll practice that that's how the Firecast operate and um, Farsight when he was born was a standout for, from the very beginning he was really fast really strong but, I mean that's just he was the anime protag. Not fully <laughs> a protag per se. He was still fallible, but he just had an, an edge, you know? He mm -hmm. wasn't top of the class immediately, but he was up there mainly because of his mind. It was less about there were stronger ones and there were faster ones, but Farsight had this uncanny ability to just memorize. He, he could... He, he applied his mind in battle in ways that no other Tao had or has, you know? Yeah. Save for a few. There's a few at that tier, but he he was just a strategist through and through. He could see far. Well, we'll get to why he gets his, gets his nickname later. Don't spoil it. But um, he would he memorize... The future? No. When, oh. he was, when he was given briefings, he would pretty much memorize every detail of it and then use that to apply pressure in the field. Even when being tested by his mentors as a completely fresh-faced newbie, he'd be able to outthink them and move in ways that they hadn't predicted. And when they asked him, how are you doing this? He'd just say, I'm just thinking about this the way you would. It comes, it comes naturally to him. It's actually why he's so potent. The Tao as a whole, are fairly empathetic, you know? It's their biggest edge over everyone else in the galaxy. They don't have many edges. I mean, the Tau edges are railguns, mechs, and empathy. Listening skills. That's it. That's it. That's all they have. I mean, that's pretty much all you need. The <laughs> power of robots and the power of friendship. Not when the Imperium is fighting everybody and not losing, per se. They're not winning. They're really not winning, but they're not losing either, which is impressive. But the power of big robots and friendship. Have you ever seen Power Rangers? It doesn't matter when there's bugs eating everything. I'm pretty sure the Power Rangers fought bugs that were eating everything. The Tau did too, and it didn't end well for them. Friendship doesn't always work. But anyway, their edge is that empathy. You can't convince people to join your side without being able to see things from their perspective. It's why the water cast is actually the most feared cast in the Imperium of any of them because the imperium has lost more worlds to the water cast showing up and saying hey your life sucks i'm gonna give you food water shelter much better quality of life and you can still worship that emperor dude all you have to do is work toward the greater good it's a phenomenal deal that's a great deal it's a phenomenal deal and it's a kind of deal. i'd say that's the deal of the century right it, there yeah. it's it's the kind of deal that could only come about if you understood the person and that's what the Tau try and do. Hell, they even try to understand orcs, which oh, did not go well for them. Did not go well for them. We mentioned that in the orc video, but yeah, you can't negotiate with them. Farsight uses this empathy in battle. He will memorize everything he can and try and put himself in the shoes of the opponent as much as possible. Because if I can, if I can figure out what you would do in the situation, then I know what's best for me to do in the situation. Think about it that way. He's playing chess from both ends of the board. Which is impressive. So impressive. Extremely impressive. It is It is extremely impressive. Again, you know, it's not the end-all be-all. The Imperium does still have the massive murder men. And the massive murder men work really well. They're, they're big. They're massive. But... They murder a lot. But that empathy thing does give him an edge. This edge is what allowed him to be the first student... Or actually, the youngest student ever to enter the Academy. And after the first four years of service... Things were going swimmingly for him, by the way, this entire time. I'm, I'm glossing over a lot of it, but basically, the things I told you he can do were just resulting in his team having the lowest casualties of any team, having the most confirmed kills of any team, and just a lot of his suggestions to his higher-ups, like, oh, we should move this, 
just wound up becoming the battle plan. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just taking dubs left and right. Oh, one, mi- one million percent. To all of them. Again, if you're playing chess from both ends of the board, you're going to be winning a you're lot. You're going to be winning, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't all victories, though. Eventually, he did take a loss. Uh, him and his team entered a live fire dome where they were assailed by unknowable horrors. I mean, Farsight usually can do the whole I, I see through your eyes thing. He couldn't figure out what the hell these were. It, it was something he was untrained for. It was something they had never seen before. They were outnumbered. They were outgunned. And one of Farsight's comrades was actually going to be eaten by this tentacled maw thing when Farsight threw himself in the path of it to try and save his life and the result being turned into minced meat. Completely jibbed. I mean, head to toe. It's gone. Oh, just just completely gone. You're, you're kaput. And it's here that we're going to take a little separation from that. I'm going to ask you, dear viewer, and you, I suppose, I guess, you happen to be here. <laughs> Have you ever had one of those dreams that's so vivid and real that you're sure this is it? You're not sure what it is that's doing this, but you're like, oh no, I'm 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 finished. Oh yeah, but this is the end. Yeah, exactly. And you only wake up at the last second before everything cuts out. You know, like right before I don't know the freight train hits you or something like that. You know, cold sweat, just drenched, panicking. That's how far set woke up. Uh huh. Exactly. As it turns out, this was what the Tau call trial by fires. Firecast. Firecast. Trial by fire. Oh, yeah. Uh, See. <laughs> <laughs> these exist, these trial by fires exist because they venerate being a mech pilot a lot. To them, it's a really high honor. And if you think about it, you are piloting a very expensive thing that's sometimes even experimental. You need to be on it. You, it's not just fast reflexes and um, being physically fit. You also need to be a good thinker. And you also need to be loyal because they don't want to just put anybody behind the wheel of those. Do we, they don't need a, the towel version of Killdozer running around. E- exactly. Um, that's that's how it's like modern day fighter pilots. Basically, it, you need to be absurdly well rounded to be behind the wheel of one. They also venerate being a commander, mostly because it's the only way to retire. It's kind of similar to the Imperium in that way, where you know the only way you can get out is by serving for X amount of time. So these. Trials by fire serve as gates almost to make sure that only the best make it past. Now, as it turns out, this trial by fire, and they're always different too, by the way. Each trial by fire will take a different shape or form. That's why they're so effective. It's not like I've sat down for the SAT or anything. No, it's I've, tailored to you. I have not sat down for standardized testing. It's not, the way I think about it is, in the beginning, it's not necessarily tailored for you in the sense that for example, Farsights, it's a whole it's a whole squadron, right? And you would imagine, after only four years of service, there's still going to be a lot of people who make it to that first one. So I would imagine those ones aren't tailored as heavily, but as you go up the ranks, you know, as you pass trial after trial after trial, they're going to become more and more focused because there's just less people, you know? Not as many people are going to make it all the way through. No. So that's the way I think about it. I, I, that That is fully headcanon. I'm not sure if that's how that works at all. But that's the way I think about it, and I would figure logistically speaking, that is how that would work. Moral of the story, the way you passed this one was by dying. Th- this one was purely a test of, would you die for the greater good? This was the scripted, like, death event. <laughs> not necessarily. This the was sh- the QTE you were supposed to face. It's, it's like in the infamous games, when you have the option to, like, to murk somebody and if you do the screen turns slightly red and now you're in the bad universe that's basically what they were testing would you end up in the bad universe i've never played any of the infamous oh games. you should they're fantastic i i know i really should oh, yeah. you sh- i own them all i'll make you play them um <laughs> but that's 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 the way you passed this trial that farsight went through you had to die you had to make sure you, you were committed because these are horrors that are unimaginable again tentacles minced meat it wasn't a quick death he got jibbed he got jibbed is is that (laughs) that's what happened there yeah so you have to be committed to the greater good to let yourself get jibbed there's very few things i would get jibbed for 
So that shows how committed he was, and because of that, he passed. Being told this, Farsight's obviously ecstatic. He's still fairly young. Again, only four years of service. Think about it that way. And so he's probably about 22. Well, Tao don't live that well, long either. Don't. But Never mind. Tao, whatever 22 is for Tao. He's the human equivalent of 22. Or Tao equivalent Exactly. Of he's ecstatic about this over the moon. But he takes a moment to go, hey, what about the people who didn't pass? And the person there goes, hey, want to be a mech pilot? <laughs> And this is every Tau, specifically Firecast Tau's dream. So yes, of course he jumps at it. He's like, immediately, hell yes. Just good. put me in a mech. All the other guys completely left his brain. Well, said, yeah. they will move to the edges. Hmm. They will always be at the edges there for a bit, and they'll come up later. But for in the meantime, that did put that thought away, and he was set to pilot a mech. But... As Farsight has now achieved his dreams and moves on to be a mech pilot, we need your help to achieve ours. No, we are not selling you anything. We are just humbly asking if you would like an extra episode every week, access to the community discord, the back catalog of all the extra episodes we've been doing since the beginning, and limited edition patches every time we smash one of our goals, which is really frequently, by the way. Then surprisingly frequently. Yeah. Head on over to patreon.com slash and Coda and help us chase the dream. It helps us produce the show and put even more muscle behind it. We have tons of ideas we want to bring through, and the only way that's possible is with your support. By the way, for those of you who have been there, hi, thank you for being you. Stay tuned to the end to get a sneak peek at the designs coming to an address near you, because we did smash 500, 250, and 100, and those will be going out very soon. And now we're really close to a thousand oh yeah we're constantly zooming so if you want access to that one please 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 head on over to patreon.com slash and coda or just click the link in the show notes for those of you here on youtube you're already amazing about this but like comment and subscribe because it's the only language the machine gods speak L listen i'm hilariously charismatic don't get me wrong youtube can't hear this <laughs> It they, doesn't it doesn't it doesn't speak yet. Those are the zeros and ones it understands. So thank you so much for continuing to do that and help us reach our goal of twenty five K now, which is wild to see the progress on that too. <laughs> we have made so much good progress on twenty five K before we even announced the goal of twenty five K. Oh one million percent. So it's thank you. Hilarious the amount of support you guys have given us. Yeah. We, knew, we do genuinely appreciate it. Thank you all so much. Now, at this point in his career, Farsight has not made enemies per se, but he hasn't made friends exactly. Hmm. It's it's something even I have inadvertently done in my life where you accidentally, and I think this is honestly something that comes with youth. Some, I'm sure you guys will sound off in the comments if you've done this before, but outshining the master, never, ever a good look. It's when you show up young and naive and you're like, okay, so you want me to do the best that I can do. So you put your entire spine behind everything you do, and it's inadvertently better than the people on top of you. <laughs> That will always cause problems. It causes a couple problems. Learned yeah. that one the hard way. Farsight's learning it too. Yeah. Because not only is he doing that thing where he's putting out incredible results while being kind of a know-it-all about it, it's also undeniably working. It's 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 not just oh that kid's working harder than me. It's oh that kid's working harder than me and better. Obviously. Obviously, the people in charge aren't going to like him, downright want to ring him out. So, since they can't do that, what's the next best thing? They make a finger on the monkey's paw curl, and they put him in a battle suit, exactly like he wanted. But it's the slowest, and the one in the furthest back. So he's never in the front lines anymore. He's playing the artillery. Map, yeah, though. he never gets to adapt, be light on his feet, and see the enemy up close like he likes. He's stuck in the back. Now, granted, he's still a phenomenal pilot. He still shatters pretty much every record for accuracy. So it's not like he's doing his job badly, but he is stuck here for four years. He's, he's, doing, he's doing a good job. It's just not the job he wants. It, exa it is genuinely one of the hardest times in Farsight's life because it's so depressed. It's having your dreams 
perverted, basically. It's, oh my God, I've wanted this since I was a kid, and you made it suck. You made this suck. Why did you guys make this suck? This wasn't me? supposed to suck. This is supposed to be great. This was supposed to be fantastic. It was supposed to be everything I ever wanted, and they made it, so it's not even close to that anymore. So, Farsight's actually depressed. Actually depressed, but he grins and he bears it. And even though he can't float like a butterfly, sting like a bee like he wants to, he does his job because he does understand at the end of the day that I am but a single thread in this tapestry that is the greater good. If the greater good says I should be way back here, <sighs> then I, guess, I should be way back here. I, I guess. guess I'll be way back here. And so he does that for four years until the next trial comes up and when he gets that chance boy does he capitalize on that he shows up so hard that they put him in a new much lighter almost melee style suit and he just works so hard when he gets his hands on this because he never wants to go back never put me in that slow artillery he, mech again he, he actually once he gets his hands on the suit surpasses the people who made his dream suck Pretty quickly. Even outside the suit, he becomes more lethal just because I will not lose this. I will not lose this. This is my shot. I'm not going to throw it away. And he capitalizes on it incredibly hard. So much so that the Ethereals notice and send him over to train under Commander Pure Tide. Commander Pure Tide. This is the Sun Tzu guy I was telling you about. The Sun Tzu guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, he's... It's easy enough to remember. Pure Tide's basically their version of Sun Tzu. He is... One of, if not the best Tau commander, he's so good that when he died, the Earth cast quickly like rushed to scan his brain. They, they rushed to scan his brain and create these chips that they could just slot into future commanders with all of Pure Tide's experience and knowledge because they're like, we can't lose this. This is too good. We, this is, I don't know if we're ever going to put something out like this again. We can't lose this. So that tells you how good Pure Tide is. He goes there with two other people. Again, that shows how good Farsight is because there's only three people there. And they all train to master the Tao art of war. The one that Farsight... Farsight becomes well-rounded. Don't get me wrong. But what he tends to focus on here is this practice where you hit them unconscionably hard. Because the Tao are always outnumbered, sometimes even outgunned. But if you can hit somebody... So hard in the nads they can't fight back. You're you're good. You've won. It, it doesn't matter if you're in an arena with an MMA fighter. If you can hit him in the nads so hard he sees purple, you're good. Well, I'm I'm, I'm pretty sure in MMA uh, a nut punch is a oh it's one million percent illegal. It's very illegal. But this is war. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Just just think Johnny Cage's move for Mortal Kombat. That's what he focuses in on. I play a lot of Mortal Kombat. You'll edit it Johnny in and you'll Cage. see it. Oh. You'll edit it in and you'll see it. <laughs> but basically... Wait, hold on. I think it's coming to mind. I think I I have seen it before. Yeah. It's a, it's one of his um, brutalities, isn't it? No. no. You'll, you'll just figure it out. You'll figure no, it the x-ray moves. That's what they're called. No? You'll figure it out. Damn. Moral of the story is... He focuses in aggressively on hitting the opponent where they're weakest with as much firepower as possible and then leaving. So really fast, really aggressive attacks that will stop the war before it happen before it fully gets underway. And the nice thing about this is it didn't get to stay theory for very long because... <laughs> Basically, the second he was done training, there were these worlds far off. The, the way the Tau work is they do spheres of expansion. So they will slowly take whole sectors and then grow and then grow and then grow. One of the far off sectors settled and discovered their neighbors were orcs. <laughs> Let me tell you, they are not great neighbors to have. And so they immediately sent Farsight that way to deal with that. Just like, yeah, you're our best guy right now. Which, they are a thing to deal with. Go for it. As an aside, the world they were on was just bright red with these massive sand dunes, almost. When they sent the Earth cast down to figure out what's going on here, they discovered it's mostly metal oxides. It's Mars. But it's not, no, no, no. Because it's not any one metal. It's so many, there had to be another civilization here once. It's so many that when they did the math, they were, they 
came to the conclusion that for this much metal to be scattered everywhere, whoever was here first had to have had cities the size of mountain ranges. And they set aside time to figure out what could have caused the spectacular death of this world and couldn't figure it out to save their lives. Little did they know, <laughs> this was the first time they encountered what the Imperium can leave behind. Oh. Yeah. Oh. The massive murder men are effective. They're, they're the Emperor's finest weapons. I'm sorry. <laughs> so they found a world that the Imperium, I'm assuming, committed exterminatus on. That's what I was going to say. This is a post exterminatus. Yep, the hellscape. And because the tower is such optimists, they said, we'll settle here. And to be fair, they're very technologically advanced. They built massive cities very quickly with incredible orbital bombardment skills. So anything that came in could be shot down. The problem is, you shot down an orc ship. Great. That's part of their landing strategy. <laughs> They wanted you to do that. The orc, the way they landed on the surface, I'm not joking, is by falling from low orbit. They wanted you to shoot them. Yep. And they so, so quickly overran the planet. It's unfunny. They're orcs. Which does lead to a very interesting state that Farsight finds the world in. Because they live in these uh, domes. Because, again terrible environment outside so they live in these domes to protect themselves and n now that their defenses are completely overrun by orcs they're put in this situation that would be an amazing horror movie because they what the the poor tau civilians are left to deal with is orcs beating on that dome day and night forever they don't get tired they're constantly beating on that dome day and night it looks like they're growing bigger because they are. Because they're fighting the dome, and the dome's winning in orc heads, I guess. So, whatever. And they're slowly ripping apart the external connections you have to food, water, air. That's a problem. Oh, one million percent. That's a huge problem. And that dome isn't going to last forever. Cracks are starting to appear. Fantastic. Fantastic horror movie. It's fantastic sci-fi horror movie. Because yep. all, all those civilians know is either those green guys are going to get me or I'm going to die of starvation. That's it. It's a or B. Pick one. Yes. But in comes Farsight. And boy, does he clean up. He uses every single page of the art of war in this one encounter. I'm not joking. They have sensors that can see the planet's massive sandstorms and predict their path because the Tau have incredible technology. He baits the orcs constantly into the paths of these storms so that they don't even have to fight them. The storm doesn't. They can just get ripped apart by basically a sandblaster. He turns orc groups against orc groups by starting infighting by them. He knows to target the orc command structure, which is fairly easy because... You look for the biggest one, you kill that one, and then you look for the second biggest one, and you kill that one. So Hilarious. It's, it's hilarious, but that's not the only way he targets them. He spends the time and efforts to learn the orc language so that he can discern what markings mean on vehicles, and he can target the ones that are marked boss. Again, the orcs are very simple, <laughs> But that's still impressive. He, not only that, does he target their medical lines? He targets because orcs have... Okay, an orc doctor is basically an orc with a sewing kit. Because that's all you need. But and a bone saw. I've and, seen them. And a bone saw, yeah. But he targets those ones. He targets their, me their mechanical lines so they can't just junk scrap together and make things happen. He systematically hits them at their weakest points really hard and then just leaves every single time. And without fail, he spends every day towards the end of the day just reviewing battle footage over and over and over again. Eventually, understanding the orc psyche so well that he can just predict what they're going to do. He has become orc. Not quite orc, but it's it's joked about by the people who watch it with him that, oh, you must have seen this one before. And they're like, oh, no, this is today. This is today's footage. How do you know? <laughs> Hence the nickname. Commander Farsight. That's how he earned it. He understands the enemy so well that he can always be about three or four steps ahead of them. 
Farsight. Farsight. And, and and just to be clear, not only does he understand how the orcs organize and move, because that's one thing. No, he understands what fuels them too. He meditates on, okay, why are these guys doing this? Because it's not like they didn't try the water cast approach of, hey, can you not, please? No, they did. And they it- tried that and they wouldn't relent. So Farsight's genuinely sits down before he fights. He sits down to think, okay, why are they here? Why, why, why won't they listen? And he realizes, he actually contextualizes orc thought in a way for him to understand where he thinks and realizes, I like fighting for the greater good. I really enjoy the risk that comes with this, the rush that comes with this, the fact that I know I'm improving with every battle. That's what fuels the orcs. And so he uses that knowledge against them, making sure that he either gives them really unsatisfying fights, never a brawl. It's like, they show up for a fight, their head explodes. It's never satisfying for them at all. He focuses in on only hitting their most important units and then leaving. He never engages them for long, and he always just leaves them unsatisfied with the fight. Which is really messed up. Right? This is why I love Farsight. It's the only Tao who could have dealt with it, and boy, did he deal with he it. He dealt with it in the perfect way. Exactly. He begins to take back land, and he was there for so long that the people eventually started to look up to him as a leader, almost. Seeing him as their savior, which Farsight didn't care about, he just wanted this problem solved. And as he kept going, these orcs, they began adapting. Mm. So, remember the way he was leading them into sandstorms and watching them get shredded? Their skin got thicker. Oh, I was going to say, did they think about, hmm, that's a big storm over there. Maybe I shouldn't. No, of course not. Of no, course not. Of Why course. would the orcs adapt a brain? No, they, they, he beat them so badly that they were running out of resources. So they started digging up old metal sheets from under the sand. Just scrap from whatever the Imperium destroyed that was here. And they start putting it together to make their weapons and armor. Inadvertently, because it matches the soil so well... They are now camouflaged really well. I, I love the orcs. I love the orcs. I They're just the so orcs. stupid. They're smart. Exactly. And this makes Farsight realize something very important about the orcs. The only way we win this war is when there's not one left. Because if I leave even one, they'll be back stronger. So even though technically he accomplished his objective of taking this world... He wants them all gone. And he was kind of right. Kind of right. But at this point, well, it's very easy to say, oh, why don't they just do this in 40K, right? Which is really easy because we know everything, but not everybody has the all-knowing knowledge that we have. Farsight was still, that was still a theory that Farsight had, that we had to kill them all. And what the ethereals are seeing is, okay, cool. So you... Fought them for a while, and you did win, but now you're not. And now they're roaming with the storms, and they're constantly doing surprise attacks, and they're camouflaging in, and there's more of them than ever, and your response is we need to kill them harder? N- n- no. No. no, the, thing no. You've, the thing you've been doing obviously hasn't been working, it, so why why should we continue doing that thing? Exactly. And so they were like, Farsight, pack it up. We're done. We're done here. <laughs> and Farsight decided to do what... Every celebrity does when their finances are looking. Eesh. He released a book. <laughs> he released. He released a book. He condensed everything he learned about fighting the orcs down to basically his version of the art of war, kind of. Yeah. A tell all on how to kill orcs, and he he left that behind with him as he was being sent back. This didn't do Jack. Unfortunately. Uh, overnight it didn't. It was really good for morale, don't get me wrong, and a lot of the Tao started taking it at face value. Yeah. But at the end of the day, Farsight never got to see its full results because he was sent away. But when he was sent away to fight something else, we'll get to that later, they did actually manage to beat back the orcs using hey. their book. Yeah. Yeah, they all became super duper aggressive fighting like him, melee range, and they did actually manage to beat the orcs. But Farsight would not get to see this or know about it for a while because he was sent over to the other end of the galaxy because they had a new neighbor knocking on their door. I think I have figured out who this is. It's the Imperium of Man. Uh, I was wrong, but that's probably just as bad. Who did you think it was? The Tyranids. No, no, no. This is the Imperium of Man, which I think is worse. About the same level. Worse. See, the Tau have taken world after world 
from the Imperium, just through negotiation, and that's something they cannot take lying down. It's... It's, it honestly would have been better if the Imperium got back news that, hey, those worlds fell. <laughs> they would have, for them, they would have been like that tracks. Okay, that tracks. This is the. It happens all the time. This is the grim darkness of the 41st millennium. Planets just kind of blow up sometimes. Exactly. Or they just fall to chaos or something. What's worse for them to hear is, hey, those planets just decided to give up on you. <laughs> They still worship the Emperor, apparently, but now they work for these blue fish people? They decided, you know what, there is something better for me out there. I, and the Imperium of Man was not having They're it. They're like, mm what? There's nothing better than man. I, one million percent. So it immediately declared them all heretics and sent so many space marines. So, so many space marines to fix this. I mean, just... It wasn't even... Space Marines are bad enough. The Sin Stompers are nothing I want to bump into. The Murder Men are terrifying. They're huge. They're, they're, they're really, really scary. They're big. The biggest problem, at least for Farsight, was these are very Codex-compliant Marines. Now, Farsight is... We'll get to the Codex for a bit, because we have to understand this. Farsight is really competent. We've covered that. He's really good at his job. His... His go broke strategy of writing a book actually worked, which is so rare if you read any celebrity books. <laughs> he's very good at his job and he's always been standout. Do not get me wrong, but the Codex Astartes was written by Gilliman. He's one of the Emperor's sons who was designed to be a demigod that ruled over logistics, strategy, and planning. If you follow that book, or not to the letter because it'll make you predictable, but if you use that book in addition to what you know in battle, you are now twice as dangerous. It's horrifying. How, however you feel about what it does to split up power and all that, just the knowledge contained in that book for organizing and regimenting an army is almost invaluable, and the tower not ready. And Farsight's good, but I think I'm going to get in trouble for this. Gilliman's kind of better? This is his thing? He was made for this? That's I mean, not... Farsight's just a standout guy. That's that's really, really good. Mm -hmm. Gilliman is a demigod. Like, I, again, one-on-one, -on -one, sword v. sword, that's different. But when it comes to planning out a battle, I think Gilliman has him beat. I th I'm sure you'll sound off in the comments. I'm sure there are fair comparisons. Like I said, I'm not opposed to being wrong. I like being corrected in the comments. But I, I think Gilliman has him beat. At least in this case, it shows. Because just by using Gilliman's book, they were trouncing them. Oh, it was bad. Oh, it was so bad. He... Farsight could adapt very quickly. But it'd be... It'd be like fighting Mike Tyson and you dodge and get a jab in. He turns to you and says, page 42, and hits you back. <laughs> that's, that's what it feels like. You had the missed opportunity to say he whispers in your ear, page 42, and then he bites it off. Okay, no, no, that's not, that's not. But that's, that's what it feels like. So in complete and utter desperation, not only did the Ethereals move their best commander over there, Farsight, they also started to thaw out those chips from Pure Tide earlier. And they started slotting them in to as many people as they possibly can. Because they're like, Farsight's impressive. Don't get me wrong. We, we need, need the like best. We need 20 Farsights we right now. We need 20 of better than Farsight right now or we will lose. Yeah. And so they did. And it did help against the Imperium's forces a lot. Because Pure Tide did. He was very seasoned at fighting people. Basically. Well, not people per se. Pure Tide is such a good commander. It helped regardless. Until... They bumped into psychers. <laughs> and they're like, what is this? And, I mean, Pure Tide never fought psychers or space marines. So... I would imagine none of them had, because they were like... It's not like they're rare, but like, mm -hmm. you have so little presence in the warp that like, you're not gonna... Yeah, exactly. You're not gonna... So while those little chips that mimicked Pure Tide helped them slow down the Imperium, because they have psychers and space marines who are all very competent... They were slowly gaining ground. It wasn't quickly, but it was a slow loss, kind of. The rest of the war is kind of vaguely relevant. The only things that change after that is that Tau basically have to build their entire empire around fighting the, the Imperium. I mean, entire supply lines are constructed and they're just throwing everybody they can at this just to keep this in gridlock. 
And eventually, uh, the Imperium gets assaulted by the bugs, and they accept the peace treaty offered by the Ethereals. Because what else? What other, what other option do they have? The Imper- the, let me be clear. The Imperium would have won. And even Farsight recognizes that. He, he has this very uneasy feeling of, ooh, we won. But it's kind of like some, when somebody stops beating the brakes off you and just walks away. I didn't win that. I survived. I survived that. But they didn't know about the Tyranids at the time. They didn't know why they were leaving. They just took it as a, okay, cool. cool, cool okay, cool, cool. they Thank left. God. We must have won. Thank God. That's how the rest of the Tau took it. However, the Tau psyche was not doing too hot. They were kind of really based themselves around this whole greater good idea. And they discovered, oh boy, it's not enough. Nobody else here is for the greater good. It's... We're kind of alone against the universe. Oh, and the universe is much bigger than we are. Yeah. So the Ethereals decided to raise the morale of the Tau by taking a page from the Emperor's book and starting a crusade to capture back what was lost. Everything can be solved with a crusade. To be fair, it's very effective. It's crusading time. And now... To do this, they decide to raise Farsight even higher. At this point, they're still, they are still see his independence as a little odd, but they need something. And Farsight goes from being a legend to a savior. I can't stress the jump he had. All of his battle footage was broadcast everywhere all the time. Every time he took a battle, the entire empire knew. Statues of him were put up left, right, and center. He was the poster on Tao Kid's bedroom. There was so much hype behind him that the ethereals were like, whoa, the water cast did way too good of a job. I don't know if he can live up to this gas. I don't think he can, frankly. He was our he was the Tao Zone personal Captain America. Kind of. That, that's basically what they turn him into, but they actually let him fight to reconquer those worlds. Thankfully, because it's Farsight, and he never wastes a chance, he did start winning hard. So hard. And living up to that legend, slowly getting more and more people supporting him. Until he heard back from that desert world we mentioned earlier. I'm skipping a lot, by the way. Just just to be clear. A lot of war happened between S- then and what we're talking about now. Every single segment of this video could be its own video. So we're just condensing this as hard as we can. Until he hears back from that world, that iron oxide filled world. The, the weird rust desert planet. Hey, there's a green guy. Hey, there's a green guy? There's a green guy. And oh. Farsight has the immediate and rational response to go... Forget this crusade, we're going back. They need to die. Kill it, 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 kill to be fair, these reports were fairly small. It was a few orcs and like weird meteor showers. That's about it. But Farsight was freaking out over this immediately and turned his whole thing around, basically, to deal with them. Deal with the orcs. Get them. Get them. Get them. And the, this miffed the Ethereals greatly, but as it turns out, he was kind of right because every single asteroid was a bunch of metal cobbled together full of orcs. Yuck. Yeah. Ick. And their strategy is only one that orcs could think of, which is... We will hit them with the force of asteroids and then survive. Because yeah, brilliant. It's like it's like a uh, it's like Halo, the ODST troopers, mm-hmm. feet first into hell. Yes, that's it's the orc ODSTs. Basically, they actually didn't start by attacking attacking those worlds that were venerating Farsight. That the worlds that he saved originally, they started on the other end of the universe. Well. The universe for the Tau. The, the, the visible universe. No, no, no. The universe for the Tau, which is laughably small. But Farsight goes over there to deal with them, and when he finally gets back to his end of the universe, he discovers that he was baited. He got you baited. As it turns out, there was an orc that had survived fighting him and had learned quite a bit. He was very big. He was smart for an orc and decided, this is kind of a direct quote, We'll attack those worlds so the red one goes there. And then we'll come for these ones. <laughs> and that's high strategy for an orc. That's incredibly high strategy for an the orc. The orc said, we wrote our own goddamn book and you can't do anything about it. That's pretty much what happened. What comes next is something that would make Yarick proud. And that is 
Farsight basically doing everything he can to eradicate the orc genome. Nothing is off limits. And he actually has this really cool scene where he's at his wit's end and he goes to meditate underwater, trying to figure out a new strategy where he can use the very planets he's on to fight. And when he leaves, oh boy, he's he's fighting in a different way. He instructs all of his jet fighters to dump all their fuel in specific patterns that he ignites by flying through so that these waves of fire waft behind them and not only murk any orcs in their path, but destroy the spores too. And then they can ride the updrafts from that heat to leave. He starts setting off seismic charges near volcanoes to set them off just to deal with orcs. He starts causing tsunamis using that same tech. He is sundering them. He's playing like the Avatar right now. One million percent. His goal is to end them. And he, again, compressing a lot, completely finishes them off and deals with that massive war boss in the middle of a massive sandstorm that nobody else bears witness to but him. But allegedly it was a one-on-one melee with an orc (laughs) that he won. And all that's left is this dust globe that he carved every single world that he saved into. That's pretty, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Right? That's pretty, pretty, he's pretty damn cool. So cool. At this point, the Ethereals are mad. <laughs> At this point, the Ethereals are mad because he stopped it and he was right for it. So but like, he still disobeyed orders. He still disobeyed orders. So when he announced that he wanted to go finish hunting any, every survivor, the Ethereals were, were like, fine, fine, just go. We'll, we'll deal with everything else. They still see you as a hero. The morale's still up. Whatever. So he continues to hunt the orcs where he bumps onto this planet that um, he encounters demons in. Ah. Long story short, he's never fought demons before. It doesn't end well. I, I would figure. His, the ethereal with him dies and he gets this weird sword and basically commits to a mission that he won't come back from just to, just to finish off any remaining orcs. He disobeys orders. And he keeps chasing these orcs, which the heroes, fine, whatever, whatever, you're a hero, you're venerated, we'll move on, right? They're upset about, but... Mm. No, whatever. And he chases them to this planet where he manages to murk an orc on this weird six-sided um, dice that summons demons immediately because blood was spilled on an altar. Oh. <laughs> they oh. absolutely work him and his team and murder his ethereal... But in the process, the ethereal there kind of lets it slip that they knew about this whole chaos thing, but just didn't share it. Didn't. Because, to be fair, if everyone believes in the greater good, if they figure out Satan's real, oh no. No, 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 no. Why? Why did they do an Imperium? Why did they keep it. Ugh. Which is really weird because they don't even get affected by chaos like that. But yeah. this this is yet another strike against the Ethereals in Farsight's mind. We'll get to that later, but this is strike three. I forgot strike two. We'll get to that in a second. More of the story is... Let me cook. <laughs> let me cook. Let, let, let him cook. Let me cook. Let uh, him cook. <laughs> he's cooking. I just don't know the recipe. So Farsight basically condemns himself to what should be a mission to end him. He picks up this weird sword from that place and decides, if I'm going to go out, I'm going to make sure every demon here and every orc here goes out with me. I will at least go out finishing this mission. He's going to do big things. Exactly. And that's going to be the last big things he does. And his mech suit is telling him this entire time, stop it, you're going to stop, stop. Go get medical medical attention. right? You're going to die. Go home. But he doesn't. He goes and he slaughters every single every single orc on the planet and comes out in his prime for it because he's just built different no no i don't mean i don't mean survives i mean his wounds are healed he's built different and he's younger he is that guy yeah what we'll get to that later now that he's younger and survived that near-death mission, he has plenty of time to think about the Ethereals and how he feels about them. And that, that creeping thought from the very beginning of what happens to those trainees, <laughs> to the people who got the Pure Tide chip, which, by the way, when they remove the Pure Tide chip, it does render you a veggie. 
Well, kind of. I, I figure it does the same thing as the relic chip from Cyberpunk, where kind it just like eats your brain, basically. And paired with now, he knows that chaos is real, and they they deliberately lied. He's having thoughts that genuinely shake him to his core because he does believe in the greater good. But what is this greater good? Who's deciding these? And are they really leading us by virtue, or are they using something else? Is this arbitrary, or is there an actual greater good? Like, mm -hmm. let's write this down on paper. No, not even an arbitrary thing. He begins to wonder, are the ethereals really that charismatic, or are they using something else to control us? Which is really heretical thoughts. This makes him freak out, and he just flies off into space. Just leaves. He just leaves to meditate on it. It's a trend for Farsight to do this. And he's not heard of for a while, basically. Eventually, it's so long that they assume he died of old age. Because you just don't hear from him anymore. Died of old age. He, he disappeared, disappeared. Exactly. They keep sending drones to that Farsight space that he captured originally. Nothing ever comes back. So they assume that he didn't succeed with the orcs and they got it. Until eventually, fairly recently, one drone makes it back. With an image of Tau cities that are flourishing with different symbols and signatures that look awfully similar to Farsight. He, what did he do? That doesn't matter. The ethereals are furious because that's secession. That's them leaving. That's, that's them forsaking the greater good. They immediately order every single statue of him torn down and begin tarnishing his reputation. Overnight, he goes from venerated savior to arch traitor. They broke into every child's room and they tore down, down the posters. Po one, well, it was more like they tore down the posters and then waterboarded that kid. Who's your hero? <laughs> yeah. It was that aggressive against Farsight. Damn. Everyone who supported him was immediately shoved underground. Literally or figuratively? I mean, they, they had to go into hiding. They had to go into hiding. Supporting Farsight overnight went from the hero who united the Tau to the villain who's going to end us all. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, he's going to take us back to the dark ages before the ethereals they are mad at him and that is where farsight story had ended up until the recent farsight enclaves which are about as good as you can get in 40k they're like they're the i hate to say the definitive good guys but they're fairly good in the grand scheme of things genuinely they completely do not follow the ethereals at all and they're really focused in on honestly their own affairs the downside is it's 40k we can't have anything good for too long no no no. it always has to get turned bad so somebody has shown up to farsight's doorstep offering them a great deal it's corn it's corn it's corn it's corn because i'll be honest if there ever was somebody who'd make a fantastic cornate champion it's farsight it's farsight loves melee loves straightforward fights enjoys battle and sees it as an art like it's painted red it, it's it's everything corn likes it's everything corn likes corn. we are yet to see if he actually becomes corrupted that is that is yet to be known but that is where farsight's story is at the moment he currently has a sword that seems to keep him alive for far longer than he should be and is leading a faction that is probably the goodest guys in 40k right now who deserve their own episode but was i right were you right? Is he going to be your model? I, you know, he, you had me from the word mecha. But is he going to be your model? Probably. Easy money. It's a mech. Easy money. It's a mech money. suit. It's a mech suit. Easy I, money. I, I like, like me some big robots. Yes. Big robots, cool. <laughs> you cannot tell me big robots are not cool. Well, he is one of the coolest big robots. He actually has this council of eight that he leads with in the far side enclaves and they all have massive mechs. Do I have to collect all of the big robots? I think you do. I think I'm going to collect all of the big robots. And now you figured out why 40k is such an expensive hobby. Because all of the big robots mm -hmm. are probably expensive, aren't they? Oh, one million percent. Oh, one million percent. Thank you for tuning in to this episode on Commander Farsight. Today there will be no foreign frack odd just because it's a fairly long episode and we wanted to use this end episode to show you all the designs that are going to be coming out to the patrons, as well as the one that's currently being worked... Well, no, hold on. All the designs that are coming out for the patrons soon. We have the orders. They're going to be shipped to us, and then we're going to start 
Getting them sh bagged up and shipped to Hold on. We're going to start getting them. <clears throat> we're going to start getting them packaged and shipped your way very soon. So the designs you're seeing are going to be sent out to the first 100, 250, and 500 patrons, respectively. And we are currently at, at the time of recording, six... Around 600-something. 650, 650. And there will be another one we send out when we get to 1,000, which is going to be scarily fast based on how we just tend to move. Oh, yeah. So if you, want to, if you missed out on those first three, that is unfortunate, but it's okay. You still have your chance to get to the 1,000. I'd recommend you head on over to patreon.com slash and Coda and join the wonderful names scrolling by as we speak right now. All around 600 of them. All, yeah, oh, that's, that's getting, a, that, this is getting longer and longer every day. This list is getting, you know, I thing. had it down to a format mm -hmm. where I was like, okay, so I just have to time it out like this. And then mm -hmm. I set my keyframe to scroll the animation up. I'm having to extend the full clip. And like, who knows? By the time I get to the editing editing room later today, mm -hmm. I may need to like add another set of scrolling names. Also, something exciting that's further off in the horizon, but I figure you guys would like to know. We are getting closer and closer to when I can devote far more time to this than I already do. And with that, I'm really excited to announce that in the future, this will take a bit, we will be doing more shorter one-on-one -on -one videos that are just the story. That's it. Just dilute it down as quickly as possible because I, I know a lot of you really like the podcast, but also say, hey, it's kind of hard to get my friend to watch an hour long video. <laughs> perfectly fair, perfectly fair. So we're going to try and jam it down even more and create these shorter ones that you can just send out to get more people to spend so much on plastic. Think, think Neil deGrasse Tyson's astrophysics for people in a hurry, but in Warhammer 40k lore format exactly so that's something that will be coming soon and it's only possible thanks to you guys and all these names scrolling by next week of course the foreign fracker will continue and we will see you on wednesday for the patreon episode and saturday for the regular one